on this stage. A big round of applause for Arshul Bhagalia. Hi. Before I start, there's something I'd like you to see. Can you have the video? तुम न होते तो काली दाल के मजे न होते जूस की दुकान पे संतरे सजे न होते तुम न होते तो छप्पन भोग के चर्चे न होते माँ के हाथ की रोटी उसका प्यार न होता रोज सुबह का व्यापार न होता लंच टाइम की शान तुमसे महफिल में पान तुमसे ही तुम ना होते तो शुभ आरंभ ना होता पहली नजर में पहला प्यार कैसे होता मीठा ना होता तो बचपन कुछ खास ना होता दूध में केसर ना होता तो चिंटू पास ना होता तुम ना होते तो त्योहार सूखे रह जाते बाकी तो छोड़ो शायद भगवान भी भूखे रह जाते किसान तुम ना होते तो कसम से हम ना होते तुम्हारा ही दिया है हर निवाला हर मुस्कान कितना भी कहें कम है थैंक यू किसान आप खाओ पियो ऐश करो हम यहां खेतों में है ना on your heart how many of you thought this video was going to be an ode to the farmers of the country did you think the video could end with a message saying thank you farmer never mind when i showed this video to a couple of people their first reaction was kya kamaal kiya maza aa gaya although it excites me as a marketer yet i feel sad i feel sad as a country we have failed to understand the obvious when was the last time you had a fantastic meal in your life and you went hey god bless you guys and bindi on my plate i asked my nephew the other day hey do you know where the food comes from and he said yes it comes from the mall but i said what if there is no food to go to the mall he said i'll go to the other mall he looked at me to how dumb i was and walked away i was dumb back back then not now i'd come back from aston university in the uk i had i was joining in the farm my family business i was this gen y guy full of energy and attitude and passion and i wanted to take it all i was confident i'm going to convert indo farm into one of the biggest agriculture companies in the country maybe even asia fresh out of college i was armed with knowledge of business and management talking double digit salaries and i was thinking if europe can convert one of their biggest landmark buildings into the biggest urban farm this is called the hate why can't we why can't we have sky farms maybe on the bandra where you see like why can't we have a farm on top of every building like i said i was a gen gen y guy but now i realize the why meant why apply common sense and there is my father who was the founder of the company he is the son of a farmer and completely rooted to the soil he was clear the next generation needs to get its basic and fundamentals correct so there i was traveling to the interiors of the country It's very important, even if you're doing something relatively close to agriculture, to understand the farmer and to understand the life of the farmer. And as I said, I was traveling to the rural interiors. Whenever I told my friends, "Hey, I was traveling to the heartlands of the country," their usual reply would be, "Eh, who are you?" And I knew exactly what they meant. It was the perception of the Indian farmer, and this is exactly where we all go wrong. A life full of despair and helplessness is the only thing we know about about the world. Yes, the first thing that comes into our mind when we talk about a farmer is usually poverty and suicide and droughts and farmer loans. And yes, this is because of the picture we are made to see. Let it be news, let it be Bollywood movies, let it be popular media. And I won't take it away from you. Yes, there is problems. Farmer suicide and depression is a real problem. How real? Let me tell you. In the year 2015 there were 12602 registered farmer suicides. This average is down to almost 34 suicides in a day. Roughly making it 1.4 suicides every hour. 12 people who put food on our table 
are likely to lose their life either by consuming pesticides or somewhere or the other during the duration of the seminar. And you know what's really cruel? But it won't even make it to the national headlines. And even if it does, it'll still be less significant than maybe a pimple on a celebrity's face. You might need a moment to soak these numbers in. Food. There can never be something as basic, as holy, as unbelievably important as the job of growing food. And it is unfortunate how we look at the person responsible for putting food on our table. Our own apathy has played a very important role in taking the pride away from the farmers and replacing it with pity. And trust me, we don't realize the burden of which is far more dangerous than even the most feared drugs. And there is a lot to be proud about. Whilst India ranks 11th in the manufacturing sector, 12th in the service, service sector, we rank number 2 in the world for our agriculture. Indian farmers are the biggest producers of milk, millet and jute. We are the second largest producers of rice, wheat, cotton, cotton and grains. And we deploy almost 50% of our workforce into agriculture. And you will be amazed that they have outperformed themselves to such an extent that in the beginning of the decade, we produce 71 kg rice and 80 kg wheat for every Indian in the country. And just imagine if this was a professionally driven corporate setup and you would have divisions and role and responsibilities and KRAs and targets and how much pride we would take in the amount of, amount of food we can produce for every citizen in the country. And not that this is not possible, but there is a problem. There is a problem at the core of it. And the problem is not lack of technology or water. The problem is this basic. It's the pride. It's the self-esteem. It's the way a farmer looks at himself, which is heavily influenced by the way we look at him. Despite of bringing 13% wealth to the Indian treasury, a farmer still is a faceless and a voiceless entity, and sometimes just a vote bank. And inevitably, there will be someone wearing a three-piece suit from an academic qualification like mine, making all the decisions for the farmers who has no, about, no idea about their life. And this is the Gen Y guy who has got it all wrong. And the result of this, 2,500 farmers are leaving their job and migrating to cities every day. The number of people who need food is growing while the number of people who grow food is decreasing constantly. Whether a small farmer, educated or not, wants to move to cities, and a bigger farmer has, has bigger dreams and aspirations for his children, maybe bigger than putting food in the mouth of the countryman. You know, India is growing. Today I get my groceries in 30 minutes. My pizza comes in, I get my groceries from an app. My pizza comes in less than 30 minutes. I don't even need to go out to make a relationship. I just swipe right on my smartphone. But at the end of the day, I cannot eat an iPhone or I cannot eat an Intel chip for a snack. I need food. And if the producers of the food get up and go, there will be a civil war. And no amount of technological advancement can save us from crumbling as a society. And if farming done right, we can change, we can solve the hunger problem for one third of the world. And there is only one solution. We need to change the way we look at farmers. We need to change the way we look at food and its producers. Our perception is our biggest enemy. We all want to grow. We all want to eat, but no one wants to grow. And why should we? Because when we are born, we are taught algebra and trigonometry. And I don't know when was the last time I used A plus B whole square in my life. But until five years ago, I didn't know how to grow a single fruit or vegetable. Food and sustainability and farming needs to be the basics of our education. You know, I love the soldiers of the country. I salute them. They die for us in the battlefield so we can live. Similarly, just like the farmer who works 16 to 18 hours, day after day, year after year, let there be rain or shine, only so we don't die. Ladies and gentlemen, the farmers of the country need to be saluted for what they do for us. It's time farmers get their due. It's time farming becomes a career choice. Farmers need to have a say in the government, in the system, in the culture. You know, as noble as doctors, as fierce as soldiers, as genius as software engineers, farming also, need, farming also needs to be a viable career option. It's time to see and be a part of this cultural advancement. And you know, this is now a personal battle. And I'm, me and Indofarm are committed, we are going to make this change. I know it's not going to be easy, but we are not going to give up either. I'm working with the clear agenda of improving, of improving the farmer's life. And which is why I had joined Indofarm five years ago as the COO. 
and today I am a farmer first. And I really hope one day you also find the same excitement and passion as to be one. And I hope to see you on the field someday. And just one last thing before I go, today when you go home and enjoy the lovely dinner, you've, lovely Sunday dinner you've prepared, just take a moment to thank the farmer who is the nameless hero for your food. Thank you everyone. Thank you for coming.